in the previous part, we say that directly using the similarity measures, XIJ is quite restricting. And we want to relax that to make, to make this more flexible. And concretely, we can do this by using a weighted sum rather than a weighted average as shown in the equation here. And a few, few notes here, uh, note that this N of I X is actually still the set of movies that are rated by the user X that are similar to movie I. So this is actually exactly the same as before. But what's different is that now that the weight here actually replaces the similarity metric here, and the weight Wij is, the, we call it the interpolation weight. This is just some real numbers and we allow the sum of the weights in the same neighborhood to be not equal to one. And this Wij actually models the interaction between pairs of movies and it doesn't depend on user X. So if effectively it's actually shared across different users. And we can see that this is actually a generalization of the previous model here, since this WIJ is now more flexible than before. So how do we set this WIJ? Remember that our error metric is the IMSE, which is just the root of the mean of the square error between the predicted ratings and the ground truth ratings. And it's actually equivalent to the sum of square error, which is here. This is just the sum of the square of the dis distance between the predicted rating and the ground truth rating. And basically we can just find the WIJ that minimizes the SSE on the training data. So basically we'll model this WIJ models the relationships between item I and its neighbors, item J. And this WIJ can actually be learned or estimated based on X and all other users that rated item I and J. And basically the idea is just to set the values of W such that they work well on the known item user ratings. So basically we want to set the W such that the error in the training data is, is low enough. So how do we find such value at W? And we can do this by first defining an objective function and we can solve the optimization problem. And concretely, we can just find the WIJ that minimize the SSE on the training data. And this is our objective function. You can see that this large term here is actually the predictive rating. Remember that this, this is the weight that we mentioned before. And this is the true rating from user X to item I. And here, this is an objective function J of W. And we can think of, think of this bold face W as a collection of all the WIJ. Basically, we can think of this W as a vector or matrix of numbers. And the simple way to minimize a function FX is first to compute the derivative or the gradient of this function. Of course, we compute the gradient or derivative derivative of this function with regard to x. And then the gradient is actually the direction to maximize this function, right? If we go along the gradient direction, we're actually increasing the value of this function. And let's say that we will start at some point y here, and, we, and then we will evaluate the gradient in this point. And then we will make a step in the reverse direction of the gradient. So this is, we just set, set the y to here, set the y to y minus the, the one small step of the gradient. And then we will get to here. This is the new value, which is hopefully smaller than before. 
and we can repeat this process until it converges. And concretely in our objective function, we will just iterate using this equation until convergence. And this is just the updating rule of W. We can just set W equals to W minus eta times the gradient of this objective function with regard to W. And this eta here is the learning rate. And here we need to do a bit of calculus to derive the gradient of this function J with regard to W. And this part is probably one of the most mathematical part in this lecture. And if you are not convinced that this is actually the gradient of the objective function with regard to W, this is the time that you can pause the video for five minutes and actually go through this equation. So after learning this W, we then can make the predictions using this same equation. Remember that this is the predictive rating from user X to item I, and this is the baseline estimate, and this is the weighted sum. And know that this weights WIJ, it's actually derived based on that rule and it's based on the training data. And there's no, there's no use of an arbitrary similarity measure. We don't need to try a lot of similarity measure to find the best one. We just learn it directly from the training data. And this WIJ actually explicitly accounts for the interrelationships among neighboring movies. So this WIJ accounts for the interrelationship between item I and item J. And to briefly summarize the performance of various methods that we have discussed until now, if we use directly use the global average, which is the average rating of all the users to all the, to all the items, we will get an RMS, RMSE of 1.12 roughly. And if we use the user average or the movie average, we're somewhere between here. And the Netflix in-house model at that time, it has a RMSE of roughly 0 0.95, which is here. And if we directly use our collaborative filtering, the basic version, it's, it's actually already a little bit better than the Netflix in-house model. And then if we use the collaborative filtering plus the bias version, basically it's the, the global effect plus the local effect version, plus the learned weight, then it will improve the MSV by three more points. And this will lead us to here, which is 0 0.91. And in the next part, we will see how we can approach this grand prize here step by step by improving the previous methods.